Hey, what's going on? This is Greg with SportsRevExpert.com and On Track Physiotherapy in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Today we're going to be discussing how patellar tendon pain does not have to be complicated and can be easily fixed and solved with four main exercises. So patellar tendon pain, if you're not familiar with it, this is pain that is on the base of your kneecap or that tendon that runs for over top of your kneecap down to the front of your shin bone. Um, it's also referred to as patellofemoral pain syndrome. It, those two diagnoses can be different, but the solution is often very similar. Um, some differences between the two, but majority of the time, they're going to have a very similar solution. So this also applies to patellofemoral pain syndrome or as well as Ajian slaughters. I think that's honestly a cop-out diagnosis for many uh, adolescent or high school athletes or middle school athletes, uh, for that matter, who get that diagnosis just from going to the orthopedic and uh, they, they tell them there's nothing they can do about it. It's just a matter of them aging, which is 100% false. You can do something about it, and that is what this video is for. So, patellar tendon pain, Telephomoral pain syndrome and Hodgkin slaughters, all three different diagnoses, but oftentimes have a very similar problem and a similar solution. And it doesn't have to be overcomplicated. It doesn't have to be that your hips are out of alignment, your knees out of the alignment. It really comes down to simple math equation of being able to accept load and tolerate load to the patellar tendon. And today we're going to be talking about four exercises that help build up the capacity of that tendon so that you can do whatever it is that you want to do. Be that run, play basketball, um, go for a jog, hike up mountains, comfortably go down those mountains as well too, which is oftentimes more complicated with individuals who have knee pain. And then even if it's just as simple of a goal of just being able to go up and down the stairs comfortably again, these four exercises are going to be able to help your knee and patellar tendon's capacity to be able to tolerate those tasks and give yourself a buffer zone from potentially dealing with pain and discomfort in the future. Now, one thing you'll notice with all these exercises, we're gonna start with a very simple tap down variation where we're standing on anywhere from a four inch step, it could even go down to a two inch step, building up to an eight inch step, and just doing a tap down. This exercise, we're gonna make sure we keep the heel down and allow the knee to translate or move forward over top of the foot while keeping the heel down. The heel down is very important to distribute stress workload through the whole entire kinetic chain, um, ankle, knee, and hip. So this is one of the most easiest places to get started, especially again, you can do this from a two inch step, which is very, very low level for the majority of people. Work your way up to an eight inch step and anywhere in the middle, you can start adding load to again, increase the strength through the range of motion that your patellar tendon is comfortable loading. Now the common misconception with any type of knee issue is that the knee should not go over top of the toes or that when you squat down your knee your butt should always go backwards a lot of times you'll heel the cue sit your butt back during a squat that is not actually a squatting motion if you sit your butt backwards a squatting movement is sitting your butt downward and that forces your knees to go over top of the foot think about going down the stairs you have to allow your knee to go over top of the foot to go downstairs so so it is normal and necessary for your knee to go over top of the foot to have a healthy lifestyle and again especially if you simply want to go up and down stairs you're gonna have to let that knee go over top of the foot so knees over toes is not a bad thing it is necessary why we will train it in these four exercises all incorporate that knees over toe philosophy but again, going back to this tap down, it's not a sit your butt backwards movement. That would be a hip dominant based movement. We're trying to train your knee in this case. So it's a squatting movement. Squatting movement is sitting your butt downward. Hip hinging or hip dominant movement, such as a deadlift, that is a sit your butt backwards movement. So anytime we're doing a squat, which all of these variations will be some sort of a squatting variation, you're going to think about sitting your butt straight down towards your heel. That will keep your whole foot on the step, heel on the step, knee, go, knee goes forward, body stays fairly well tall, and then you tap your foot to the floor and come back up. Again, anywhere from two inches to eight inches and anywhere in the middle as you stall out, depending on your range of motion of your ankle and what your patellar tendon allows for loading through a range of motion, you can start loading in a comfortable pain-free position. 
the second tap down variation is very very similar um, this one is just going to be done on a slant board so if you don't have a slant board you can simply elevate your heels by using a plate um, putting like a, a two and a half pound plate five pound plate um, 10 pound plate. The highest width of a plate that I generally use is about a 25 pound Olympic weightlifting plate. Um, that's about a two inch uh, heel lift essentially. Um, the thing I don't like about the plate is it, is it makes the foot a little bit more unstable. Um, it's harder to balance in that position. You don't get the arch contact that you do with a slant board. Um, so a slant board is ideal, but again, if you don't have a slant board available to you, you can use a plate. Or if you have square dumbbells, you can just set the square dumbbell um, on the floor and put your heel up on the, uh, up on the handle. Uh, that's another way to elevate your heels. But it has to be a square dumbbell because a circular dumbbell will just roll away from you and you don't, you don't want to fall on your ass when you do the exercise. So um, plates, dumbbells, or uh, ideally using a slant board. This is again a tap down variation. Um, we'll start from the floor. And depending on the incline that you, you, you utilize that with, that's a way of directing more force or more capacity, more loading to the patellar tendon. It's always done in a pain-free way, so if it's painful, you need to decrease the incline. And then perform it from the ground at first, and then work your way up to a 4-inch step, a 6-inch step, possibly even an 8-inch step. Um, and again, you can manipulate the step height as well as the incline of that slant board or the incline of the heel lift to manipulate the load that you are comfortable to perform a tap down under. And then finally you can add weight to this exercise too if you're comfortable um, within any of those ranges of motion. So again, if you feel like you're stalling out from a uh, adding height or depth to the slanted step down, you can just perform the height that you're comfortable with. Um, if you're uh, trying to increase the slant um, or the incline that the heel lift is on, but you stall out there, then your next option is to adding load. So there's three variables that we can always manipulate with this exercise. It's the height of the step, it's the incline or the heel lift, or it's the load that is used. And you're always trying to make improvements, so any one of those three variables can be manipulated to make improvements, but once you find your level of capability, you're only going to want to manipulate one of those variables at a time. If you manipulate too many of those variables at a time, that's a reason for a flare-up that often occurs when people are trying to rehab from the issue or push this exercise too quickly along. Um, you have to keep in mind that it's going to take it's going to take time for your tissue to adapt. So you have to gradually load and gradually manipulate those variables so you only change one of those variables at a time as you're progressing through um, this exercise on a week-to-week -week basis or a month-to-month -month basis. The third variation of the tap down is actually very similar to just going down the stairs. In fact it is going down the stairs. This one we are going to allow the heel to come up off the ground. We're going to go from heel to toe and then toe back to heel. Now the nice thing about this exercise is actually the amount of load that you can use or what your knee is able to withstand is very directly related to what your ankle is able to withstand or the load that the ankle is able to withstand um, and it's, it's on the way back up. So uh, it's much harder with this exercise to push back up or go from toe to heel and that's going to be limited by your ankle strength and stability as well as your patellar tendon loading capabilities. So um, we can't go too heavy of this exercise um, because the push back up is going to be the most challenging part for that and that's what's going to limit how much load you put on the bar or how much load you use with dumbbells. Obviously again this needs to be pain free but the variables you can manipulate here are again step height and load. Um, because we are going to be going from heel to toe. There is no slant board with this one. There's just two, two variables that we're going to manipulate. Um, so those two variables, again, once you find that baseline level of your capability, then you manipulate one of those variables at a time. So it's either the load you put on your back or you try going up to a little bit higher of a step. Again, somewhere between a 2-inch step to an 8-inch step is of the range that we're working with. I usually don't go above 8 inches unless the individual um, is pretty darn tall. 
The final version of the tap down, I like to call this one the limbo tap downs because it looks like you're doing the limbo. Ideally, this is done on a slant board. Again, that's going to add the most amount of loading to the patellar tendon. The amount of incline that this exercise is done at will add a degree of intensity to the exercise, but you can't add weight to this exercise um, just because there's no real good way of holding on to load. Um, I mean, you could hold a dumbbell at your chest here, but again, I find most of the time people are going to be um, do just well with just body weight with this one and do anywhere from 10 to, to 30 reps of the exercise. Um, all the previous exercises we've done, I generally stay in, in the range of 6 to 15 rep range, whereas the limbo tap down, I usually go for 8 to 30 on the rep range, so a little bit higher of a rep activity because uh, we're sticking with body weight. Uh, the variable you can manipulate here is the slant board incline, uh, but at the simplest level, this could be done flat on the ground. Um, and again, this is getting you used to accepting load over top of the foot. The heel does stay down on this exercise, but now what we're doing is we're elongating the quad, the rectus femoris, uh, in particular from both ends. So we're really eccentrically loading that patellar tendon, um, both from that patellar tendon attachment site, but then all the way up to the hip by leaning backwards and keeping the hip locked with the glute um, kind of constantly contracted or, or constantly squeezing your butt cheeks as you lean backwards. So knee goes forward as your shoulders drop backwards towards your heel. Um, so that's a slight difference than all the rest of them that we've talked about. Um, all the rest of them we kind of talked about more of that butt to heel action of that typical squatting movement, not a butt backwards movement. That would be a hip hinge or a deadlift again, but a butt downward movement. This motion, that knee is still going to go forward, the shoulders are going to go down towards the heel to create that limbo or backwards decline position that's going to put a lot more um, stress and loading to the patellar tendon, which will develop that buffer zone or body armor against injury to that patellar tendon and allow you, again, to play sports that require your knee to go over top of your foot to allow you to run pain-free for any distance that you want to to allow you to play basketball for as long as you want to without developing knee pain, patellar tendon, patellofemoral, Hodgkin slaughters, pathologies that people just give you the diagnosis and don't give you a solution. This is your solution to pain-free knees and most of the time it only takes four exercises. So if you are struggling with any of these exercises and you'd like some help with these exercises, feel free to email me at greg at sportsrehabexpert.com and I'd be more than happy to help troubleshoot you through these exercises with an individual consultation or potentially in some instances there are some other exercises that we do have to get into or look a little bit deeper at your biomechanics and technique behind some of these exercises and add a couple extra things too. So if you're struggling with these and you're still having pain, Again, email me at greg at sportsrehabexpert.com and we'll set up a time uh, to discuss those issues. If you're a sports rehab clinician looking to develop more of these treatment qualities, bridging the gap between rehab and sports performance, and also do this in a scalable fashion for your general population patients, then head on over to sportsrehabexpert.com. We have three courses that are geared towards you and have CEUs available for physical therapists. These three courses are the Sports Rehab Fast Track course, the Human Assessment Mastery course, and the Treatment Domination course. So if you're a sports rehab clinician or orthopedic clinician, even if you're a personal trainer who wants to help keep your patients performing at the highest level and keep your clients pain-free, then these three courses are going to be useful for you. So head on over to sportsrehabexpert.com and check them out. Again, if you got questions about them, send me an email, greg at sportsrehabexpert.com, and more than happy to help walk you through what benefits you'll get out of taking these three courses.